In mathematics, physics, and engineering, a Euclidean vector is a geometric object that has magnitude and direction and can be added to other vectors according to vector algebra. A Euclidean vector is frequently represented by a line segment with a definite direction, or graphically as an arrow, connecting an initial point A with a terminal point B. In denoted by a vector is what is needed to carry the point A to the point B. The Latin word vector means carrier. It was first used by 18th century astronomers investigating planet rotation around the Sun. The magnitude of the vector is the distance between the two points and the direction refers to the direction of displacement from A to B. Many algebraic operations on real numbers such as addition, subtraction, multiplication, and negation have close analogues for vectors. Operations which obey the familiar algebraic laws of commutativity, associativity, and distributivity. These operations and associated laws qualify Euclidean vectors as an example of the more generalized concept of vectors defined simply as elements of a vector space. Vectors play an important role in physics. Velocity and acceleration of a moving object and forces acting on it are all described by vectors. Many other physical quantities can be usefully thought of as vectors. Although most of them do not represent distances, their magnitude and direction can be still represented by the length and direction of an arrow. The mathematical representation of a physical vector depends on the coordinate system used to describe it. Other vector-like objects that describe physical quantities and transform in a similar way under changes of the coordinate system include pseudovectors and tenses. History The concept of vector, as we know it today, evolved gradually over a period of more than 200 years. About a dozen people made significant contributions. Giusto Bellavitas abstracted the basic idea in 1835 when he established the concept of equipollence. Working in a Euclidean plane, he made equipollent any pair of line segments of the same length and orientation. Essentially he realized an equivalence relation on the pairs of points in the plane and thus erected the first space of vectors in the plane. The term vector was introduced by William Rowan Hamilton as part of his system of quaternions Q equals S plus V where scalar S and vector V3. Thus Hamilton's vectors are three-dimensional. Like Bellavitis, Hamilton viewed vectors as representative of classes of equipollent directed segments. As complex numbers use an imaginary unit to complement the real line, Hamilton considered vectors V to be the imaginary part of quaternions, the algebraically imaginary part being geometrically constructed by a straight line or radius vector, which has, in general, for each determined quaternion, a determined length and determined direction in space, may be called the vector part or simply the vector of the quaternion. Several other mathematicians developed vector-like systems in the middle of the 19th century, including Augustin Cauchy, Hermann Grassmann, August Mobius, Comte de Saint-Venant, and Matthew O'Brien. Grassmann's 1840 work theory Der Eber und Flut was the first system of spatial analysis similar to today's system and had ideas corresponding to the cross-product scalar product and vector differentiation. Grassmann's work was largely neglected until the 1870s. Peter Guthrie Tate carried the quaternion standard after Hamilton. His 1867 elementary treatise of quaternions included extensive treatment of the nablar or del operator. In 1878 Elements of Dynamic was published by William Kingdon Clifford. Clifford simplified the quaternion study by isolating the dot product and cross product of two vectors from the complete quaternion product. This approach made vector calculations available to engineers and others working in three dimensions and skeptical of the fourth. Josiah Willard Gibbs, who was exposed to quaternions through James Clerk Maxwell's treatise on electricity and magnetism, separated off the vector part for independent treatment. The first half of Gibbs's Elements of Vector Analysis, published in 1881, presents what is essentially the modern system of vector analysis. 
In 1901 Edwin Bidwell Wilson published Vector Analysis, adapted from Gibbs Lectures, which banished any mention of quaternions in the development of vector calculus. Overview. In physics and engineering, a vector is typically regarded as a geometric entity characterized by a magnitude and a direction. It is formally defined as a directed line segment, or arrow, in a Euclidean space. In pure mathematics, a vector is defined more generally as any element of a vector space. In this context, vectors are abstract entities which may or may not be characterized by a magnitude and a direction. This generalized definition implies that the above-mentioned geometric entities are a special kind of vectors, as they are elements of a special kind of vector space called Euclidean space. This article is about vectors strictly defined as arrows in Euclidean space. When it becomes necessary to distinguish these special vectors from vectors as defined in pure mathematics, they are sometimes referred to as geometric, spatial, or Euclidean vectors. Being an arrow, a Euclidean vector possesses a definite initial point and terminal point. A vector with fixed initial and terminal point is called a bound vector. When only the magnitude and direction of the vector matter, then the particular initial point is of no importance, and the vector is called a free vector. Thus two arrows and in space represent the same free vector if they have the same magnitude and direction. That is, they are equivalent if the quadrilateral ABBA is a parallelogram. If the Euclidean space is equipped with a choice of origin, then a free vector is equivalent to the bound vector of the same magnitude and direction whose initial point is the origin. The term vector also has generalizations to higher dimensions and to more formal approaches with much wider applications. Examples in one dimension Since the physicist's concept of force has a direction in a magnitude, it may be seen as a vector. As an example, consider a rightward force f of 15 newtons. If the positive axis is also directed rightward, then f is represented by the vector 15n, and if positive points leftward, then the vector for f is minus 15n. In either case, the magnitude of the vector is 15n. Likewise, the vector representation of a displacement delta s of 4 meters to the right would be 4 meters or minus 4 meters, and its magnitude would be 4 meters regardless. In physics and engineering vectors are fundamental in the physical sciences. They can be used to represent any quantity that has magnitude, has direction, and which adheres to the rules of vector addition. An example is velocity, the magnitude of which is speed. For example, the velocity 5 meters per second upward could be represented by the vector. Another quantity represented by a vector is force, since it has a magnitude and direction and follows the rules of vector addition. Vectors also describe many other physical quantities, such as linear displacement, displacement, linear acceleration, angular acceleration, linear momentum, and angular momentum. Other physical vectors, such as the electric and magnetic field, are represented as a system of vectors at each point of a physical space, that is, a vector field. Examples of quantities that have magnitude and direction but fail to follow the rules of vector addition, angular displacement and electric current. Consequently, these are not vectors. In Cartesian space in the Cartesian coordinate system, a vector can be represented by identifying the coordinates of its initial and terminal point. For instance, the points A equals and B equals in space determine the free vector pointing from the point X equals 1 on the X axis to the point Y equals 1 on the Y axis. Typically in Cartesian coordinates, one considers primarily bound vectors. A bound vector is determined by the coordinates of the terminal point, its initial point always having the coordinates of the origin O equals. Thus the bound vector represented by is a vector of unit length pointing from the origin along the positive x-axis. The coordinate representation of vectors allows the algebraic features of vectors to be expressed in a convenient numerical fashion. For example, the sum of the vectors and is the vector plus equals equals.
Euclidean and affine vectors in the geometrical and physical settings, sometimes it is possible to associate, in a natural way, a length or magnitude and a direction to vectors. In turn, the notion of direction is strictly associated with the notion of an angle between two vectors. When the length of vectors is defined, it is possible to also define a dot product, a scalar value product of two vectors, which gives a convenient algebraic characterization of both length and angle in three dimensions. It is further possible to define a cross product which supplies an algebraic characterization of the area and orientation in space of the parallelogram defined by two vectors. However, it is not always possible or desirable to define the length of a vector in a natural way. This more general type of spatial vector is the subject of vector spaces and affine spaces. An important example is Minkowski space that is important to our understanding of special relativity, where there is a generalization of length that permits non-zero vectors to have zero length. Other physical examples come from thermodynamics, where many of the quantities of interest can be considered vectors in a space with no notion of length or angle. Generalizations in physics, as well as mathematics, a vector is often identified with a tuple of components, or list of numbers, that act as scalar coefficients for a set of basis vectors. When the basis is transformed, for example by rotation or stretching, then the components of any vector in terms of that basis also transform in an opposite sense. The vector itself has not changed, but the basis has, so the components of the vector must change to compensate. The vector is called covariant or contravariant depending on how the transformation of the vector's components is related to the transformation of the basis. In general, contravariant vectors are regular vectors with units of distance or distance times some other unit. Covariant vectors, on the other hand, have units of 1 over distance such as gradient. If you change units from meters to millimeters, a scale factor of 1 1 thousandth, a displacement of 1 meter becomes 1000 millimeters a contravariant change in numerical value. In contrast, a gradient of 1 caper meter becomes 0.001 caper millimeter a covariant change in value. See covariance and contravariance of vectors. Tenses are another type of quantity that behave in this way. A vector is one type of tensor. In pure mathematics, a vector is any element of a vector space over some field and is often represented as a coordinate vector. The vectors described in this article are a very special case of this general definition because they are contravariant with respect to the ambient space. Contravariance captures the physical intuition behind the idea that a vector has magnitude and direction. Representations Vectors are usually denoted in lowercase boldface as a or lowercase italic boldface as a. Other conventions include or a, especially in handwriting. Alternatively, some use a tilde or a wavy underline drawn beneath the symbol, e.g., which is a convention for indicating boldface type. If the vector represents a directed distance or displacement from a point A to a point B, it can also be denoted as or ab. Especially in literature in German it was common to represent vectors with small fractal letters as. Vectors are usually shown in graphs or other diagrams as arrows, as illustrated in the figure. Here the point A is called the origin, tail, base, or initial point. Point B is called the head, tip, end point, terminal point or final point. The length of the arrow is proportional to the vector's magnitude, while the direction in which the arrow points indicates the vector's direction. On a two-dimensional diagram, sometimes a vector perpendicular to the plane of the diagram is desired. These vectors are commonly shown as small circles. A circle with a dot at its center indicates a vector pointing out of the front of the diagram toward the viewer. A circle with a cross inscribed in it indicates the vector pointing into and behind the diagram. These can be thought of as viewing the tip of an arrow head on and viewing the flights of an arrow from the back.
In order to calculate with vectors, the graphical representation may be too cumbersome. Vectors in an n-dimensional Euclidean space can be represented as coordinate vectors in a Cartesian coordinate system. The endpoint of a vector can be identified with an ordered list of n real numbers. These numbers are the coordinates of the endpoint of the vector, with respect to a given Cartesian coordinate system, and are typically called the scalar components of the vector on the axes of the coordinate system. As an example in two dimensions, the vector from the origin O equals to the point A equals is simply written as the notion that the tail of the vector coincides with the origin is implicit, and easily understood. Thus, the more explicit notation is usually not deemed necessary and very rarely used. In three-dimensional Euclidean space, vectors are identified with triples of scalar components. Also written this can be generalized to n-dimensional Euclidean space. These numbers are often arranged into a column vector or row vector, particularly when dealing with matrices, as follows. Another way to represent a vector in n dimensions is to introduce the standard basis vectors. For instance, in three dimensions, there are three of them. These have the intuitive interpretation as vectors of unit length pointing up the x, y, and z axis of a Cartesian coordinate system, respectively. In terms of these, any vector or in R3 can be expressed in the form, or where A1, A2, A3 are called the vector components of A on the basis vectors or, equivalently, on the corresponding Cartesian axis x, y, and z, while a1, a2, a3 are the respective scalar components. In introductory physics textbooks, the standard basis vectors are often instead denoted. In this case, the scalar and vector components have denoted respectively x, i, Arizona, and x, i, Arizona. Thus, the notation A is compatible with the index notation and the summation convention commonly used in higher level mathematics, physics, and engineering. Decomposition as explained above a vector is often described by a set of vector components that add up to form the given vector. Typically, these components are the projections of the vector on a set of mutually perpendicular reference axes. The vector is said to be decomposed or resolved with respect to that set. However, the decomposition of a vector into components is not unique because it depends on the choice of the axes on which the vector is projected. Moreover, the use of Cartesian unit vectors such as is a basis in which to represent a vector is not mandated. Vectors can also be expressed in terms of an arbitrary basis, including the unit vectors of a cylindrical coordinate system. The latter two choices are more convenient for solving problems which possess cylindrical or spherical symmetry respectively. The choice of a basis doesn't affect the properties of a vector or its behavior under transformations. A vector can be also decomposed with respect to non-fixed basis vectors that change their orientation as a function of time or space. For example, a vector in three-dimensional space can be decomposed with respect to two axes, respectively normal and tangent to a surface. Moreover, the radial and tangential components of a vector relate to the radius of rotation of an object. The former is parallel to the radius and the latter is orthogonal to it. In these cases, each of the components may be in turn decomposed with respect to a fixed coordinate system or basis set.